Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be answering one very simple question. Should you play a hunter in classic Wrath of the Lich King? This video will cover all of the important topics. First of all, new spells and their changes, pet changes and new pet abilities, talent changes, notable and interesting glyphs, and lastly we'll talk about their viability in a raiding and PvP environment. By the way guys, if you're looking for some insanely fast levelling guides for TPC Classic right now and for when Raffle Lich King comes out, and also some cheeky gold guides, you want to check out the Legends over at Rissed XP. You'll find all the information for that down below in the description. But anyway, let's jump in. First of all, we have Aspect of a Monkey, which has now been buffed to 18% dodge. We also now have Aspect of a Dragon Hawk, which essentially combines the effects of Aspect of a Hawk and Aspect of the Monkey. You also now have Coal Stable Pet. Every five minutes, you can just bring a pet from the stables without having to actually go to the Stable Master. Aspect of the Viper is a little different now. So your range of melee attacks have a chance to regenerate mana, and that is based on your attack speed. In addition to that, you do 50% less damage, and you gain 4% of your maximum mana every three seconds. Kill Command is very different now. It's on a one minute cooldown, the damage of your pet special attack is increased by 6% for 30 seconds, but each special attack done reduces the damage bonus by 20%. Beast Wrath now lasts 10 seconds. We can talk about the Beast Mastery abilities without talking about the actual Beast Mastery talent. This now allows you to train exotic pets. These include the Chimera, Devil Saw, Core Hound, Rhino, Silithid, Spirit Beast, and The Worm. We will talk way more about pets later in the pet section. Aim Shot is now a total instant ability. We have a new shot called Chimera Shot that has different effects depending on what sting you have on the target, and it does itself deal 125% weapon damage, and it will refresh the actual sting you currently have. With Serpent Sting active, it's gonna instantly deal 40% of the damage done by your Serpent Sting. Viper instantly restores 60% of the total mana drained by a Viper Sting, then Scorpius Sting is going to be a 10 second disarm, but that can only occur every one minute. Hunter's Mark now does the maximum increased range damage instantly, you don't have to wait for certain attacks to build that up anymore. Another new ability called Kill Shot, 200% weapon damage plus 2.5k, can only be used on targets below 20% health, it's basically your Hunter Execute ability. Readiness is on a 3 minute cooldown, will refresh all of your cooldowns except Bistral Wrath. Scorpion Sting has been nerfed to only be 3% instead of 5%. Silencing Shot can now be used as a kick on raid bosses. Steady Shot does damage based on your weapon damage and ammo, then plus 744, plus you cannot anymore clip your auto attack with Steady Shot, so you can just spam it. Tranquilizing Shot no longer just removes an Enrage effect, but also a magic effect from the enemy target. Viper Sting is also a little bit different now. It's based on 4% of the enemy's mana, up to a maximum of 8% of your own mana, which is a, it's a bit weird. Basically, it drains mana based on a percentage now, and it will also return the mana back to you, and that's equal to 300% of the amount drained. You also have the ability Master's Call, this is actually a Beast Mastery ability, I just forgot to mention it. What it does is basically freedom for your pet, it's going to remove all root and movement pairing effects and cause it to be immune to those kind of effects for another 10 seconds on a 1 minute cooldown. Now for survival abilities, we finally do now have Black Arrow, which is a dot sting, which is very nice. Increase the damage done to the target by 6% while dealing 4.3 shadow damage over 15 seconds. This does share a cooldown with your trap abilities though. Deterrence is now much more powerful, it's on a 1.5 minute cooldown. When it's activated, it gives you 100% parry chance, reduces the chance for range attacks to hit you by 100% and grants 100% chance to deflect spells. And it lasts 5 seconds. Disengage is finally in its final form, it will leap you backwards. We also have a new ability called Explosive Shots on a short 6 second cooldown, does 1k damage, but also blast the target for an additional 2 seconds. You now have the ability Freezing Arrow, which essentially allows you to throw your Freezing Trap at ranged. It's when the Scatter Freezing Trap combo in PvP comes into effect. And another thing to note here is your traps will only exist on the ground now for 30 seconds instead of one full minute. Mongoose Bite no longer requires you to dodge for it to activate. 
Wyvern Sting is a little bit different. The duration of it has been extended to 30 seconds, so it is a much more powerful, you know, PvE CC ability for when you're clearing difficult trash packs. So now I'm going to go through all the pet changes. There's quite a lot to get through, I'm not going to lie, but going to do it as fast and as efficient as I can. Lucky enough, I did get a good resource for this, Petopia, during Raffle Lich King era. So all the information is going to be directly taken from that website, and I will leave a link to it in the description as well. So everything that you knew about pet skills and training has totally changed. You will never need to train your pet ever again. Beast training, loyalty, and training points no longer exist. Pets now know all of their possible skills when they are tamed. The skills that each family knows have changed. Pets go rank up automatically as the pet levels up. Every pet family now has at least one totally unique family skill. In addition to their family skills, each pet also now has a focus dump ability plus growl and cower. The rest of the old skills have turned into talents or base stats. Pets do now actually have talent trees. There are three different pet trees, cunning, ferocity and tenacity. Each tree has a slightly different focus, so cunning is slightly more focused on PvP, ferocity on raid DPS and then tenacity on tanking, on soloing difficult enemies. But all three make for good, strong pets for most purposes. Each pet family will now use a specific tree. Crabs, for instance, always use the tenacity tree. You can buy talents for your pet with pet talent points. Pets earn talent points as they level up, starting at level 20. Pets get one talent point for every four levels. Once you buy a talent for your pet, it works very much like a pet skill. You can find purchased talents in the pet spellbook, and you can put them on the pet's action bar and toggle auto cast on and off. When it comes to pet families, there are now 32 different pet families, including seven exotic families. Exotic families can only be tamed by hunters who actually have the Beast Mastery talent at the bottom of the tree, like we mentioned earlier. Beast Mastery hunters who respect their talents, they actually lose access to that tamed exotic pet until they spec back into that talent. While they do not have a talent, they can neither call their exotic pets or take them out of the stable. Moths and wasps can be tamed by any hunter, they're the two new ones. Our family is now called Birds of Prey and includes other birds of prey such as you know, carrying birds and everything like that. Now let's talk about pet care. So when you tame a really low level pet that's more than five levels below, you will automatically be five levels below you when you tame it. And this goes for stable pets as well. Stable pets will always automatically level to be at least five levels below the hunter. Pets now only require 10% of the experience of a character of the same level. Hunters can now have two extra stable slots available for purchase, that means that they can have four pets in a stable and one with you for a total of five. Because loyalty points no longer exist, pets will no longer run away no matter how unhappy they get. Happy pets still get a bonus to damage however, so you will still want to keep your pets happy. In addition to food, there are now several other ways to increase your pet's happiness, including pet talents and glyphs. The diets of some families have been broadened, for instance bats will now eat meat, Gorillas, tall striders and turtles will now eat bread, and never rays will eat fungus. However, hyenas no longer eat fruit and serpents no longer eat fish. Now to get to the nitty gritty, let's talk about pet stats, which have changed quite a lot as well. So of each family having its own set of health, armor and damage modifiers, stat modifiers now correspond to pet talent trees. For example, all cunning pets have the same health modifier. It's quite simpler now. Pet stamina now benefits even more from Hunter Stamina, pets get 45% of Hunter Stamina added to their own, previously it was 30%. Pets also benefit from their Hunter's hit and critical rates. Pets now get a base resistance to all elements equal to their level. For example, a level 11 pet will now have a base resistance of 11 to Arcane Fire, Frost Nature and Shadow Damage. Pets that previously had inferior caster stats now have perfectly normal stats. And now we've got to go through all of the new brand spanking pet abilities. So first of all, bats can now get Sonic Blast, which deals nature damage and stuns a target for two seconds. Birds of Prey now get a disarm effect called Snatch. Chimeras have Frost Storm Breath, which deals frost and nature damage and slows a target for five seconds. A Dragonhawk's Fire Breath looks a little different now. It doesn't affect in a cone. It seems to just affect the current target. Never Rays get Never Shock. Lashes a target for shadow damage, but also interrupts spell casting, prevents any spell in that school from being cast for two seconds. So it's basically a, a nice kick. Ravagers get Ravage, which will stun the target for two seconds. Serpents get Poison Spit, 
Nature damage over 8 seconds, reduce of a target's casting speed by 25% also for 8 seconds. Silphids get Venom Web Spray, which prevents the target from moving for 4 seconds and also deals nature damage, and then the spider gets a worse version of this that does the exact same but doesn't deal any damage. Spore Bats get Spore Cloud, which deals nature damage and also reduces the target's armour, and also you get Wind Serpents with Lightning Breath, and that looks like it's totally unchanged. Now we have the Ferocity Pets, so Demoralising Screech, Prowl and Rake from Cats looks unchanged, but now we have Core Hounds at Lava Breath. Your pet breathes a double gout of Molten Lava at the target, dealing fire damage and reduces the target's casting speed by 25% for 10 seconds. Devil Saws get Monstrous Bite. Your Devil Saw ferociously bites the target, causing damage and boosts its own damage by 3% for 12 seconds, and it can stack 3 times. Hyenas get Tendon Rip, which is a 50% movement speed reduction for 6 seconds. Moths will get this ability called Serenity Dust, produces a cloud of dust that increases its attack bar by 10% and heals it for 15 seconds. Raptors get Savage Rend, which puts a bleed on the target, but then successful crits will temporarily boost the damage of a raptor by 10% for 30 seconds. Spirit Beast gets Spirit Strike, burns the enemy for arcane damage, and then an additional bit over 6 seconds. Toss Striders get Dust Cloud, basically an AoE effect that causes all enemies within 10 yards to miss their next attack. Wops get Sting, which deals a little bit of nature damage for 20 seconds, but while they're affected, decreases the armour and the tiger also cannot stealth or turn invisible. And it looks like a wolf's furious howl is unchanged. Bears get Swipe, which is a cheeky cleave ability. Gore is a little bit different for the boar, causes double damage if used within 6 seconds of a charge. Crabs now have an ability that pins the target in place for 4 seconds. Crocs have this bad attitude spell, which strikes enemies back when they get hit and it lasts 45 seconds. Gorillas have a kick, and I'm presuming that this can be used on raid bosses. Rhinos have Stampede. The Rhino slams into a nearby enemy for a certain damage, and then causes them to take 25% additional damage from bleed effects for one minute. Looks like Scorpid Sting and Turtle's Spell Shield fairly similar to how it was. Warp Stalkers get the ability Warp, teleports them to a nearby target up to 30 yards, gives a pet a 50% chance to avoid the next three melee attacks, and this lasts for four seconds. And for Worms, they get Acid Spit, which deals nature damage, reduces the armor of the target by 10% per Acid Spit for 30 seconds, and can stack up to two times. Here we have our Focus Dump abilities that most pets can get. You know, you've got Bite, Claw, and then it's also included Smack. These basically just do all the exact same thing now. They just, you know, have different names depending on what pet you have to be more realistic to what pet you have. And all pets now can get Cower and Growl. By the way guys, here are the new pet talent tree. So this is Tenacity, more focused on tanking. Cunning, more focused on PvP. Then the Frosty tree, more focused on just pure DPS. I'm going to leave these like linked in the description because this video is just going to get abnormally long if I talk about all the different pet talents. But there's so many cool new added things, like for instance, every pet now can get charge, dive or dash, so every pet has a really good gap closer. You've got cool stuff like bullheaded, which is an extra freedom ability for your pet. And then an ability like silverback, which allows your pet to regenerate 2% of its health every time it growls. Now let's quickly jump through the talent changes. So pathfinding now includes increased mounted speed instead of the animal handler talent. There's a new talent here called Aspect Mastery, which has different effects depending on what aspect you have up. So, for Viper, reduce the damage penalty by 10%. Monkey, 5% reduced damage taken. Aspect of a Hawk, increased attack power by 30%. And then Aspect of a Dragon Hawk, it will combine the bonuses of Monkey and the Hawk. Spirit Bond now increases the healing you receive and your pet as well by 10%. Animal Handler increases your pet's attack power by 10%, increases the duration of Master's Call by 6 seconds. Ferocious Inspiration now increases the damage dealt by Arcane Shot and Steady Shot by 9%. There's a new talent here called Invigoration. Whenever your pet scores a crit, with a special ability, you regenerate 1% of your mana. Another new talent here, Longevity, reduces the cooldown of Bestial Wrath, Intimidation and pet's special abilities by 30%. Cobra Strikes, 6% chance when you crit with Arcane Shot, Steady Shot or Kill Shot to cause your pet's next two special abilities to also critically hit. Kindred Spirits increases your pet's damage by 20% and the movement speed of you and your pet by 10% but it doesn't stack with any other effects. And also we've got Beast Mastery at the bottom, the only thing I haven't mentioned is it will give you 4 pet skill points. 
As you can see at the top of the marksman tree, it's changed a little bit. So improved concussive shot is now just two points. He got his new ability called focused aim, reduces the pushback suffered from damaging attacks while casting steady shot by 7% and increases your chance to hit by 3%. And then also lethal shot is at the top here. Hunter's Mark now increases the bonus attack power granted by it by 30%, doesn't include melee attack power anymore. Concussive Barrage has changed to only be affected by Chimera shot and multi shot, not your auto shots. Range weapon spec is now just 3 points, not 5. Combat experience increases agility and intellect both by 4%. New talent here called Rapid Repercussion, you gain 4% of your mana every 3 seconds while under the effect of Rapid Fire and you gain 2% of your mana every 2 seconds for 6 seconds when you gain Rapid Killing. Master Marksman, a little different, increase your crit chance by 5%, reduces the mana cost of Steady Shot, Aim Shot and Chimera Shot by 25%. New talent Wild Quiver, you have a 12% chance to shoot an additional shot when doing damage with your auto shot, dealing 80% weapon nature damage and then it consumes also no ammo. Improved Steady Shot. It has a 15% chance to increase the damage done by your next aim shot, arcane shot, or chimera shot by 15% and reduces the mana cost of your next aim shot, arcane shot, or chimera shot by 20%. Another new talent, Mark for Death, increases the damage done by your shots and the damage done by your pet special abilities by 5% on marked targets and increases the crit chance, bon sorry, crit damage bonus of your aim shot, arcane shot, steady shot, kill shot, and chimera shot by 10%. I mean, you have chimera shot at the bottom. In the survival tree we have this new talent called improved tracking which basically has all of the tracking talents combined into one. Savage Strikes now also affects Counter Strike. There's a new talent here called Trap Mastery so Frost Trap and Freezing Trap increase their duration by 30%, Immolation Trap, Explosive Trap and Black Arrow increase the periodic damage by 30%, Snake Trap increase the number of snakes summoned by 6. Survival Instincts now increases the crit chance of Arcane Shot, Steady Shot and Explosive Shot by 4%. Survivalist is based on your stamina stat and not your total health anymore. Deflection now reduces the duration of disarm effects against you for 50%. Survival Tactics also reduces the cooldown and disengage by 4 seconds. The new talent TNT increases all the damage done by Explosive Shot, Explosive Trap, Black Arrow and Immolation Trap by 6%. There's also this new talent called Lock and Load, so you have a 100% chance when you have Freezing Trap, Freezing Arrow or Frost Trap down, or a 6% chance when you deal periodic damage with Immolation, Explosive Trap or Black Arrow to cause your next two Arcane Shots or Explosive Shot spell to trigger absolutely no cooldown and cause no mana and consume no ammo. Has an internal cooldown of 22 seconds. The talent here, Hunter vs Wild, increases your pet's attack power and range attack power equal to 30% of your total stamina. Master Technician, your successful range attacks have a 10% chance to increase the crit chance with all attacks by 10% for 8 seconds. Noxious Stings is a new talent for Wyvern Sting. If it's dispelled, the Dispeller is also affected by a Wyvern Sting lasting 50% of the duration remaining, increases all damage done to you on targets afflicted by a Serpent Sting by 3%. Point of No Escape increases the crit chance of all your attacks on targets affected by your Frost Trap, Freezing Trap or Freezing Arrow by 6%. Sniper Training here, it increases the crit chance of your kill shot by 15% and when you're standing still for 6 seconds, you gain a Sniper Training buff that Basically increase the damage done by a steady shot, aim shot, black arrow and explosive shot for 6% for 15 seconds. Hunting party increase your total agility by an additional 3% and your arcane shot, explosive shot and steady shot crits have 100% chance to grant 10 party or raid members mana regeneration equal to 1% mana for 5 seconds last for 15 seconds. And those are all of the new talents and the new talent changes, now it's time to cover the more notable glyphs that you're probably likely going to be using in raiding and in PvP. Most of them are all about cooldown reduction, they are fairly boring I am afraid. So first of all, Glyph of Serpent Sting increases the duration of your Serpent Sting by 6 seconds. You've got a Glyph of Steady Shot increases the damage dealt by 10% when your target is afflicted with Serpent Sting. Glyph of Kill Shot reduces the cooldown by 6 seconds. You can also go for the Explosive Shot Glyph if you're playing Survival, increases a crit chance by 4%, but when you get a ridiculous amount of crit, you normally drop this Glyph. You've also got Glyph of Aim Shot to reduce its cooldown by 2 seconds. I think this is more of a PvP one, along with the Glyph of Disengage, which is going to reduce its cooldown by an extra 5 seconds. I think the max you can get it down to is 16 second cooldown, which is very nice. His last talents are more for leveling or soloing, so your arcane shot re refunds 20% of its mana cost if a target has one of your stings active on it. 
Then you've also got Glyph Amending, increase the healing done by a Mem Pet by 40%. That's going to be great for soloing enemies. And then you've got some of your minor Glyphs. You can reduce the cooldown of Fain Death by 5 seconds. Men Pet, you can affect it to actually increase the pet's happiness slightly. Possessed Strength is a little interesting. Increase the damage your pet inflicts while under the effects of Eyes of Beast by 50%. Glyph of Revive Pet, reduce the pushback suffered by 100% which is pretty nice for PvP. You can also get pushback suffering reduction on Scare Beast by 75%, and then you've also got Pack, which increases the range of it by 15 yards. So when it comes to the viability of playing a Hunter, you really do not ever have to worry, okay? Marksman and Survival, they are the better specs for raiding. Beast Mastery is a little behind them. Marksman needs a little bit more scaling, so most people go for survival early game, and then go Marksman a little later when they've got better gear. But you, you don't have to switch to Marksman. You, you can stay in survival if you want to. It's more than powerful enough. When it comes to PvP, Marksman, definitely better than the other specs in PvP, and it's really, really solid. You're basically just pay, playing a worse version of the Marksman Hunter if you play the other specs, and not gonna lie. So in PvP, I would say they're like AT are pretty much throughout Wrath of Lich King. Again, you don't have to worry about not being viable. The Marksman, definitely an A tier PvP class, if we're saying that, you know, S tier is just above them. So definitely great for PvP. And then the other specs, yeah, they're more like B tier. They're just not as good as a Max. Anyway, I think my voice box is going to break pretty soon. I've talked so much about the Hunter. There is so many things to cover, as you can see, when it comes to Hunter changes and everything like that. But anyway, my name is Medigoblin to my next video. Ciao.